Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord again. We thank God for another blessed Sunday morning, another day that the Lord has made. Amen. We shall rejoice and be glad in it, thanking God for his provisions. Yes. For watching over us last night. Mm-hmm. Keeping us shielded and protected as we yeah. slumber through the night. We just thank God for being being an awesome God. We have a Another lesson this morning by the help of the Lord and the power of the Holy Ghost. Thank God for you and YouTube. Uh, log it on. The subscribe button. Click the thumbs up. Send us an email. NB for church, NBC for church. At gmail.com. Thank God for the beginnings. Amen. The president this place this morning. Mm-hmm. Well, we have another help. I mean, another lesson by the help the Lord and the power of the Holy Ghost. The lesson this morning entitled Perfect Knowledge. Mm-hmm. Perfect Knowledge. All right. Or better yet, mature understanding. Mm. Perfect knowledge. Mature understanding. So before we get into it, let us have a word of prayer. The grace and heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus, Lord, we come this morning thanking you once again. We return the mercy and your kindness, Lord. We thank you for a mind to be assembled together in your name. You said where two or three are gathered in your name, that you would be in the midst, Lord. We pray that you would move in this place according to thy will. Open up our hearts and mind our understanding. Give us direction. Continue to be the Lord of our life. And we'll praise and glorify you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Perfect knowledge. Perfect knowledge. Our, our uh, focus verse comes from the book of Ephesians, Paul to the Ephesian church. Mm-hmm. Uh, the fourth chapter, excuse me, the fourth chapter, verses 12 through 15. And so let us read that. I'll be reading from the King James like you did. You can follow along from your version. Verse 12. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. 13. Till we all come in the unity of the faith Mm -hmm. and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, Mm -hmm. unto the measure of of the statue of the fullness of Christ, 14, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive, 15, but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things which is the head, even Christ. Perfect knowledge. Uh, Perfect knowledge. Perfect knowledge or mature understanding. Mm -hmm. Knowledge says this, as it pertains to our lesson today. Knowledge says understanding to know, personal experience, full discernment. Knowledge of God is that greatest knowledge and is the chief duty of mankind. New Testament, one knows God through knowledge of Jesus Christ, uh, also described as acquaintance with facts, truth, truths, or principles, as from study or investigation, the fact or state of knowing, the perception of fact or truth, clear and certain mental apprehension. Mm -hmm. And that word perfect, uh, mature, equipping, having all the required or desirable elements, qualities, or characteristics as good as is, as good as it is possible to be. So this is what we're dealing with this morning. And we're going to try to give some light we're going to try to share some light 
because uh, in the body of Christ, we understand that when we see that word perfect in, in the scriptures, mm -hmm. automatically our mind, our thought run to maturity. And so uh, that's good and that's true. But here, the Holy Ghost shed some light on, on us this morning. And so we're going to try to convey that over. Uh, we understand that it is our charge as the body of Christ to come to maturity, mm -hmm. come to perfection. And so most of the time we see, uh, we think of the carnal aspect and we kind of wrestle with that because we know that nobody is perfect or without flaw. Mm -hmm. And so you understand that the Lord is not meaning uh, perfection in that aspect. So Holy Ghost will share with us this morning uh, an aspect of perfection that uh, the body of Christ must come to we must come to this aspect of perfection. And uh, and we also must come to the other aspect of perfection also, which is the overcoming. You know, we, we have to overcome this world. We have to overcome uh, wow. evil with good. We have to, you know, we have to not render evil for evil. That's all coming to perfection too. That And, that, and we have to do that also. But this aspect, uh, the Lord enlightened our our minds and our spirits is uh, let's 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 break this down. The twelfth verse go slow. The twelfth verse. First of all, we have to understand. Let's let's go back. Let's go back to the eleventh verse, mm -hmm. the fourth chapter of Ephesians. The eleventh verse says, "And he gave some apostles." and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors, and teachers. He's talking about the gifts that he has left in the church. The 12th verse says, for the perfecting of the saints. Now that perfecting there is for the equipping the equipping of the saints. Mm -hmm. Why? For the, the keep on reading the twelve verses says for the work of the ministry. Understanding, he gave these gifts to the church for the equipping and the working of the ministry. Keep on going for the edifying of the body of Christ. For the edifying of the body. Christ. Verse 13. Till we all come in the unity of the faith. Mm -hmm. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. We're very familiar with that. Paul would write in another portion of the book of Ephesians. And of the knowledge of the Son of God. Okay, here we go. And of the knowledge of of the Son of God. Knowledge is understanding. Mm -hmm. Knowledge is to know. The gifts given to the church are for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body, for the unity of the faith, and of the understanding of the Son of God unto a perfect man, a matured man. This is a mature understanding. This is a perfect knowledge, a mature understanding unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. 14. 
Now you got to catch 14. Mm -hmm. That we henceforth be no more children. Now what are children? Children, as is pertaining to this text, are immature. They're children. They're not grown. They're immature. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Mm -hmm. he's, he's saying that the that these things is done, is left in, into the church. That we will not be children, or we will not be immature. Catch this, what tossed to and fro, mm -hmm. and carried about with every wind of doctrine. Now, now we won't pause right there for a minute, because this is the maturity that he's talking about. This is the perfect understanding that he's talking about. This is one that we don't dress much, address much. We address the other aspect of maturity. But he is saying, you and I are not coming to perfect understanding, or you and I are not coming to mature understanding, or we're not coming to perfect knowledge mm -hmm. if we are still chasing other doctrines. All right. If we are still doubting the God's plan of salvation through Jesus Christ. I know we like to brag and say, well, I this and I that and I this. But Paul is letting the Ephesians know that you and I are still children. We are still immature. If we are still doubting Christ. And a lot of times we set up in church and we hear sermons and then we go out and we say, well, I, I, I don't believe that. I still believe this. Guess what? Mm -hmm. You have not reached perfection yet. Mm -hmm. Because the perfection that the Lord is speaking of, the perfect understanding or the perfect knowledge is knowing the knowledge of who the Son of God is and not being able to be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. So if I'm still going in and out of worship week in, week out, and still believing what someone else is saying, then I'm not, I have, I'm still not coming to perfection. What are you talking about? My understanding is still a child. This is the perfect knowledge. This is the mature understanding that he's talking about. I can't sit in church for years and still not believe all of the word of God. All right. I have not reached perfection. Although I may stand up and proclaim and declare, Paul said these gifts that Christ, when he, when he ascended on high and held captivity captive, and he gave gifts to men. He said these gifts was for the perfecting of the saints. They were for the equipping of the saints. For the saints would know and understand the Son of God so the saints would not have to continue to be tossed to and fro Amen. by the doctrine of men. Complete. Now let me finish the 14th verse. It said by the slight of men and the cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. That's all they're doing. Mm -hmm. That's all they're doing is lying in wait to deceive. Mm -hmm. But when Paul is letting the Ephesians know, but when we come to perfect knowledge or mature understanding, we're stopped moved by what yes, men are teaching. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because we have a perfect understanding or the perfect knowledge of who the Son of God is. Mm. 15 verse puts the exclamation point in a period on it. It says, but speaking the truth in love, he said, may what? May grow up into him in all things which is the head, even Christ. Perfect knowledge, mature understanding not being children, he said, in love may grow up, and we may grow up. 
into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. This is perfect knowledge. This is perfect knowledge. This is a mature understanding that the scripture is talking about. That we, uh, he said, the gifts to the church, the ministry. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that. The ministry. <clears throat> the gifts to the church is supposed to give, it's supposed to teach this. It's for, he said in the 12th verse, for the perfecting of the saints. It's for equipping the saints. Equipping them with what? With this knowledge. Knowledge is understanding. Mm -hmm. Equipping them with this understanding so we can go to perfection, so we can be a perfect man. First of all, for we can come to the unity of the faith mm -hmm. and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man. And 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 not and and he said and 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 be not as children tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine mm -hmm. in the slight of men, he said, which lie in wait to deceive. Right. So that is that's evident that our understanding of coming to perfection, we have to, we have to revisit that. Mm -hmm. Like I say, I, if, if I, st if I still don't believe the word of God mm -hmm. Amen. in any area, I have not yet obtained perfection. Although I can stand and proclaim it in that carnal aspect, God knows the truth. Mm -hmm. I can't uh, if if I if if I don't come into the unity of the faith and I don't believe uh, that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, and whosoever believeth in Him should not perish. Yes. I have not reached perfect knowledge. I have not reached mature understanding. That's. Let's move on. I've got about 15 minutes to unravel this. Colossians. Mm -hmm. Colossians uh, 1 and 9. I'm sorry, Colossians 1 and 10. Colossians 1 and 10 says that ye might walk worthy of the Lord un unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Increasing in the understanding of God, increasing in knowing God, that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the understanding of God. Coming to the place where we believe God, that we believe every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Amen. When we're still not believing every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God, then we have to be reminded that we don't live on bread alone. We live by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Mm -hmm. And if we haven't accepted that, then we haven't the, per the perfect knowledge. We haven't mature understanding yet. Uh, now let's go back up to verse 9 and read down to 14 real fast. Verse 9 says, For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Verse 10, That ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Verse 11, Strengthened with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. Mm -hmm. 12. Giving thanks unto the Father which has made us meet, be partakers of the inheritance of saints in light. 13. Who have delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son. 14. In whom we have redemption 
through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. We're talking about perfect knowledge, talking about a mature understanding. This is the perfection that God is talking about, that we don't doubt God, perfect obedience to God. Without that, we have not come to perfection. Our understanding is still being developed or challenged or we're still doubting. Mm -hmm. uh, mm, let me move on. The time is running. <laughs> Colossians, the second chapter, second verse, says that their hearts might be comforted, be knit together in love and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding through the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ, of the mystery or the revelation of God. To know God, to know God, uh, knowledge is also to know God. So when God reveals himself to us, he said that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love. Mm -hmm. Now, it seemed like in all the scriptures that we dealt with in this lesson, it's going to allude to that word love. It's going to allude to that word love because that he said that their hearts might be comforted being knit together in love. Mm -hmm. Being knit together in love. Back in Ephesians, the fourth chapter, the 15th verse says, speaking, but speaking the truth in love may grow up here it says knit together in love. We're talking about perfect knowledge. Right. Talking about mature understanding. So if, if there's not if there's not uh, if, if the congregation, if the body of Christ is not knit together, then love is lacking. Okay. And if love is lacking, then Immaturity is present. Mm -hmm. Immaturity is present. The perfect knowledge is not there. Yeah. The mature understanding is not there. Because the gifts were given to the body of Christ for the equipment of the saints, for the working of the ministry. Not the members versus the preacher. One body. The end of verse 15 says, Into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. Christ is the head of the church. Yes. Not me. The body is to come into unity. In love, we grow up together into Christ. Right. But when we got, he said, we're children. Are immature when we scattered in the church, still not accepting or acknowledging the word of God, all the word of God, because we don't live by bread alone. Amen. And some of us do not believe. And some of some of us will boldly say, Well, I don't believe that. Your understanding is, is not there. I would urge you to get under some Bible teaching. Get under some Bible teaching because it's dangerous to say, I don't believe that when it pertains to the word of God. Yes. When this anointing or this power or this gift was given to the church for you and my perfecting. Mm -hmm. hmm. I, I would advise you to get under some other teaching because the body of Christ, the church is where you and I will be perfected. Not only is it where you and I will be perfected, but it's where you and I will be called away. Amen. We will not be called away on the outside doubting the word. Amen. Moving on. All right. Ah. Second Peter 3 and 18. He said, but grow in grace. There it is again. Grow. Love, grace. What is grace? Love and unmerited faith. Yes. He said, but growing grace. We're talking about perfect knowledge. 
talking about mature understanding. We're talking the truth. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. For that amen on it, that's it. That's it. <laughs> both now and forever. Grow in the grace. Grow in love and in the knowledge or in the understanding of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Understand. Understand uh, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Why? Because he redeemed us. Yes. He reconciled us back to God. He atoned for your sin and my sin. Right. Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world. Right. There is no if, ands, or doubts about it. And he said, no man cometh to the Father. He said, but right. by me. Mm -hmm. He said, I am the door. And by me, if any man in there, he shall be saved. Amen. Perfect knowledge, mm -hmm. mature understanding is understanding that God has glorified Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Yes, He has appointed Jesus Christ. He has sent, the Bible say, God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Mm -hmm. We're talking perfect knowledge. We're talking the understanding of Jesus Christ. We're talking about the body of Christ being anointed, being gifted for the ministry to evangelize the world. Hmm. First of all, we have to believe it ourselves. Yes. Right. In order to speak the truth, we have to understand who Jesus is ourselves. Moving on. I got about five minutes to unravel this. Philippians 3.10 That I may know him talking about knowledge or understanding that I may understand him or know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death. That I may know him <clears throat> talking about Understand, talking about knowledge, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection. What is resurrection? Resurrection is a quickening. It's being made alive. Oh, yeah. The writer, Paul, has said that I, that I may know him. In other words, I, I, I may understand or be like him mm -hmm. and the power of his resurrection. The power of his resurrection or his quickening or his being made alive for you and I is the, the receiving of the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Yes. And with mm -hmm. the receiving and the infilling of the Holy Ghost, we have that power because the, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is going to be the same spirit that resurrects our body. Right. Yes. Talking perfect knowledge. Talking mature understanding. You have to know this. We can no longer be children tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine. They say by the slight of men, they lie in wait to deceive. A lot of us are being deceived because of our doubt and the fact that we don't believe. One of the disciples said, oh Lord, help my unbelief. That should be our prayer. Help my unbelief, because if we don't believe all of the word, mm. then we don't. We have not yet come to perfect knowledge. We have not yet come to mature understanding, because uh, the Bible says the just shall live by faith. Amen. And you and I cannot have uh, selective faith. It's, it's not funny, but we cannot have selective faith. Amen. The first and greatest commandment is love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. 
cannot have selective faith. Moving on. 1 Corinthians 2 and 11 says, For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Woo! A lot of us think that we're justified with our excuses and, 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 and so forth and on. But God is no respecter person. And God does not uh, honor the person of man. Understand, in Adam, man, we, 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 we fail. We, be, we took on a fallen nature. Amen. So now you think a holy God is, is going to accept the nature of a fallen man. But the fallen man will stand and, and convince the believer based upon what he thinks in, in the conversation. That's why Eve and the serpent should, she shouldn't have been over there talking because we'll be <laughs> deceived the same manner. But we're not understanding. It's the spiritual. You'll be, you'll be deceived in the same manner. Amen. Stand there talking to somebody that don't believe. The Bible lets you know that the spirit of God don't recognize the spirit of man. Don't recognize it. It does not recognize it. This is why you have to be born again. The spirit of God recognizes the spirit of God. Amen. We have to, I'm talking perfect knowledge, talking mature understanding. Proverbs 8 and 10 says, receive my instruction mm -hmm. and not silver mm -hmm. and knowledge rather than choice gold. The knowledge, perfect knowledge, mature understanding, is the gifts that was left in the church for the perfecting of you and I, to bring us to that place where we uh, have no doubt in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. The word of God Amen. has to be believed in every aspect. Because that, that was the gift. That was the gift. Break this thing down real slow. That was the gift that Christ left to the church or anointed his church with. He, he anointed them with the gift of eternal life. This is why he puts the spirit in the church. The spirit is eternal. So you can't, uh, you can't deny the gift of the Holy Ghost because that is what's eternal. The flesh is going back to the dust from which it came. Our soul, our soul is what is eternal. And it takes the quickening of the Holy Ghost. He said, you and I that were dead in trespasses and sin. God has quickened us, mm -hmm. quickened us with his spirit. Yes. He's made us alive through his spirit. We read in our other lesson that it's by the same spirit that all these gifts was in the church. The healing, the wisdom, right. the knowledge, all this stuff is by the spirit. And so we're talking about perfect knowledge. Yes. Talking about mature understanding. Mm -hmm. And so we're talking about Jesus Christ. He, uh, Paul told him he led captivity captive and he gave these gifts to men and they were for the equipping or the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry. When we come to this knowledge and this understanding, then we are mature. Yes. We no longer entertain the doubters, and we no longer doubt ourselves, basically what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. We don't doubt ourselves. We believe the word of God. Amen. That's the only way to come to uh, perfect knowledge is, is to have faith in God. So as it always is, we encourage you to repent, be baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of your sins.
Allow the Lord to fill you with the Holy Ghost as he did on the day of Pentecost. Mm -hmm. And so before we let you go, let us pray. We bow in. Be gracious and heavenly Father in the precious name of Jesus. Lord, we come before you once again to thank you for the fellowship, the communion of your spirit this morning. Lord, you said where two or three were gathered in your name that you would be in the midst. Lord, we pray that you would move on each and every one of us according to thine will, Lord. You know our needs and our desires, Lord. We just ask that you would continue to lead us and guide us by thy word. And we praise you and glorify you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.